Welcome, everyone. Um, this is the fourth episode of season 11 of the Productize podcast. And in the season, we are talking with Luis Newton. Um, so, as you know, this is also um, the season that we talk about the future of cities. Um, what if cities cared more about their digital products and services and treated their citizens like customers they want to retain? What if the mayor would be, you know, like the equivalent of a CEO of a company, of a product company? So who would take the role of the eventual chief product officer, the, the role of the CTO of the city? And more importantly, what transformations and improvements could this bring about for lives and citizens as a whole? And this is the same podcast where innovators, geeks, creators, and entrepreneurs come to discuss impactful ideas. Our mission is to inspire people to impactful action. And my name is Andre Marquis. I'll be your host today. So today I'm talking with Luis Newton. Hi, Luis. Um, so Luis is the president of Lisbon Sestrela Boro, um, which has been in this role for almost nine years. And although he's been working in this field for, for more than 20 years now, in municipal administration since 2001, he has held various functions in this area, both in the, the former Borough Council of Lapa and, and, and in the Lisbon City, City Council, and also in the Lisbon Municipal Assembly. He was also an advisor to the Secretary of State for Culture between July 2011 and November 2012 and was later appointed advisor to the PST parliamentary group until October 2013. And also in 2013, he was elected president of the Borough Council of Estrela. He has sought to take change of the opportunity of the administrative reform of the city of Lisbon to modernize systems of service to the community from the integration of CRM type models for contact with the population to smart city solutions for territorial management and optimization of means and resources and if you don't know Estrela, if you're not from Portugal if not from Lisbon let me just tell you a little bit about the Estrela uh, neighborhood the Estrela, Estrela Poro uh, it's just out of the center of Lisbon yet it's close enough for convenience and you'll find uh, that Estrela offers a happy medium for most who choose to live there if you're a couple, family, or individual moving to Lisbon for the first time, this is the neighborhood to, you know, to get a great start, to get a great place to start. And they have uh, over 20,000 residents in the, in the borough and still offers plenty of green areas to relax and hang out with friends, most notably Jardim da Estrela, which is the focal point of the neighborhoods. And it's also a very popular hood for, um, you know, for foreigners and also uh, regarding the, the, you know, it's unique integration of Portuguese and, and foreigner um, and foreigners living in the city. This popularity has driven house prices uh, to rise and co-working spaces still remain a few, but that's probably going to change. And we're going to hear a little bit um, uh, from that from Luis for sure. Welcome, Luis. How are you? Hi, Andre. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. How is the year going? Well, it's it's starting. Uh, unfortunately, not for all of the for very known reasons, it's not it's not starting as a great year. I mean, we were just getting around pandemic, and now we're facing uh, a full full military conflict in Ukraine. We don't know how it's gonna evolve, and right. uh, I think that is a big shadow over everything that 2022 was supposed to to bring us. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I understand you have been busy organizing all the help to the people in, in Ukraine, either people that are there, refugees or at the borders, but also people that are coming. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about how is it going? I've seen photos of you, you know, doing actions in, in on social media, but um, of course, um, you know, any KPIs, what have you achieved so far, numbers? Yeah, kind of well, basically we, we've been trying to, well, first and foremost, it, the idea was we got to do something. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that fortunate for 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 the Ukrainians and but also for for everyone, this is something that we 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 can all condemn. So we are all together in this, in condemning this this invasion of the Ukraine and and the Ukrainian people are suffering at the hands of a 
of, I don't know, someone uh, like President Biden described, uh, it's almost uh, like a lunatic. So mm -hmm. we, we, do, we have to do something. Uh, we have a, a very important community uh, in Portugal and in Lisbon of Ukrainians. Um, we reach out to them, trying to understand their needs and mm -hmm. how could we be useful to them. Um, and we had a, a huge outcry from the entire community saying, listen, if you're trying to mount some some kind of organization to, to support them, uh, get us involved as usual. They were very responsive and, and we've been first and foremost, first response was um, let's have, uh, uh, sorry, let's have uh, first, first need uh, um, uh, like food and mm -hmm. um, and clothing and uh, medicines. And you, that, you have already started shipping the, those. Yeah, uh, we did. We we achieved uh, a milestone for a borough. We we shipped out uh, for the last almost a month. It's something like seven tons. Okay. Uh, which is, I would say, it's representative of, of not the, the of generosity the, of the, the people. Yeah, of, of all of our community. They step forward and they say, "What can we do? What can we send?" Uh, we were a means to an end to to every uh, every everyone in in Strela. and um, eventually not only those that were in Strela, but we had a lot a lot of contacts from uh, companies outside Strela, mm -hmm. from from institutions social institutions outside Strela, and they say okay you have something already set out to 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 make um, make all of this reach uh, those that are in in real need, and we said yes we have. And, and they joined us in, in those efforts and, uh, and we've been shipping out. And uh, now we are already on the, I would say the second phase of our campaign. People are coming in, they've been embraced by our community. We have several dozens of, of, of families that, ha that have been receiving uh, refugees from Ukraine, families that are torn apart by war, um, um, fathers that are left that, that were forced to to stay or or optioned to stay in in Ukraine, um, and the rest of the family came to Portugal and to Strela. So so you are already already uh, welcoming people. From... We yeah, Strela the Strela as a community is already welcoming people. Yeah. Strela as an organization, the borough, they we have been we've signed up with um, with High Council for for refugees and and saying. They told us, listen, if you want to um, uh, have some sort of installations ready for them, this is what you need to have. Mm -hmm. And we've and, been. And you have space in Estrela, Borough? Yeah, we've, we've been. We've been uh, because our, our the requests that we initially had were not, um, uh, listen, we don't need a place for them to stay for one or two days. We need a place so that they can stay there for uh, we don't know four yeah. months six months yeah, a some year. of them bring kids so they have to go to yeah. school and they have to register so and you are helping uh, yeah we're this. helping but I, I have to say that um kudos for our own community they've been very they they, they had the initiative all along mm -hmm. uh, we've been with them uh and we've and we felt their support uh, during this entire moment and now I think that um, we now are, are getting um, support to those that are coming here. Yeah. So this is, I would say, this is the second phase. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I'm strongly, I'm hoping that we can soon start the third phase that is helping them getting back to the Ukraine mm -hmm. because peace is in Ukraine or peace will, uh, we hope. Uh, yeah, it at, will uh, eventually come and the country needs to be uh, reconstructed. Yeah. Um, so. Do you think this is like the most important part of the the job, um, you know, taking care of people's needs? This is the job, uh, uh, not not people's need, not not specifically from refugees from the Ukraine, but our own community on a daily basis. So this is the job. Usually, people say, "Oh, who is responsible for this and that?" Uh, I know that they are just being kind. They don't care who's responsible. They they just want the job done. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I say, okay, that yeah. person or that entity could be responsible for. But Absolutely. listen, we'll 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 try to get them also. And did you ever say this is not my job? 
That is not my job. No, I never say this is not my job because uh, in the end of the day... When, it, when in fact it's not, right? No, most of the times it's, it's not. not. <laughs> most of the time people come to us with, uh, uh, with something that is not actually within our own grasp, within our own mm. uh, responsibilities, but we, we cannot turn them the way. And so... Mm. So we'll have our, to channel them. Yeah. To our, specific and response. sometimes it's not channeling them because uh, they are faced, they're faced with... Uh, a bunch of bureaucracy that they don't have the time for, so they look to they look to us uh, for solutions and to help them and say, "Listen, I can signal the problem, and uh, uh, please solve it. Right. Don't make me go from department to department on CD right. Hall or other you, other." You, you need to be passionate to save, uh, you know, to solve people's problems. So why did you decide to dedicate your life to the public service? At least, you know most of your life as I know it. Yeah, basically, uh, at some point, it all started when I, um, I went into politics. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those that say that I'm not a politician. I, is, I am a politician. Um, and so uh, first challenge that I had was at the time, I, I'm, the borough of Cyril didn't, didn't exist. It only existed after 2013. And um, the, um, the reorganization of the, the administrative map uh, borough's map of the city of Lisbon. And um, prior to that, uh, Stella was actually three boroughs. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was Lapa, was where I was born, where I lived most of my life, or where I still live. Um, and, um, and people from my party said, listen, if you know Lapa so well, why don't you, we're trying to put some new people on the, on the boroughs, new ideas. And I thought, well, why not? Uh, let me try it. Something people from the, the, your political party. From my political party, um, and they were they were they were looking for people from Lapa, and then usually boroughs were uh, always with people that were older, uh, like sixties uh, and seventies. Right. True. <laughs> um, and uh, and at the time they said eh, we need some new blood. And I thought, okay, we can do a difference. We can make a difference somehow. Um, and uh, and I decided, let's go to, let's go to the borough. I was not present at the time. I was a member of the. Um, we we were an executive. We have an executive branch on the borough and an assembly, and now um, I was part of the executive branch. And um, and. It was a difficult period because uh, it was a clash of mentalities. I mean. Uh, at the time, I had a president that said, listen, we're here like a sub-department of the civil government of Lisbon, and uh, sometimes we do things for City Hall. And I was thinking, well, but we can do a lot more. Mm -hmm. And um, and he told me, uh, he gave me um, four responsibilities, traffic, transportation, um, uh, sports, and youth. And I asked him, I was very excited. Wow, this, this <laughs> it's a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things and exciting things. And he told me, no, no, uh, we don't have any responsibilities in traffic or transportation. <laughs> and uh, there are no um, um, municipal equipment, uh, sporting equipment here in, in Lapa. So okay. I give you this because you'll have nothing to do. And the youth, well, they don't care about boroughs. So good luck. Uh, and I, at the time, everyone told me, well, this, is what, this was his way to <laughs> sideline you and not give you any trouble, not, not giving him any trouble. Um, but I remember I told him, well, sir, um, you'll end this term hearing anything but transportation, uh, traffic, uh, sports and youth. This will be you'll be seeing these through your eyeballs. This will be, and I took that. Um, and uh, in, in those four years, we, we were able to change uh, uh, streets. Uh, um, uh, we had streets that have uh, um, more than one way and we thought uh, this can be. Sense, and so right? I, told, I, I went with the project to City Hall. Listen, we have to change. This can only have one. This can only be a right. one-way street. It cannot have two ways. So you, you had to learn on the job. Yeah, yeah, I learned on the job. It was, uh, I would say it was the most fantastic two and a half years because it was 
uh, brewing the project, trying to to get things up to speed, trying to know where our limitations were. Nobody give a heck about boroughs. Uh, I, I asked for meetings and people were saying, who? Uh, borough of Lapa? Uh, a borough? Right. But what? Why? Why do we have boroughs knocking on our doors? And um, nowadays, it's them coming to us. I think it's very exciting. It's very transformative. But you actually started your uh, at least academic uh, course as a naval engineering with a naval engineering degree at uh, Instituto Superior Técnico. Um, I never, I never graduated. Which you never uh, graduated, uh, but you still endured for, for for a couple of years. Uh, unlike uh, Mayor Carlos Moeda, that actually endured for the entire yeah. course and did uh, his uh, civil engineering uh, degree. Um, but in a parallel universe, are you are you a manager at the company? Are you in the private sector? Do you see yourself as an engineer at the shipyard somewhere? Or well, I, do I you know. really feel that that was not, you know, that was not meant to be? This is this is the right universe. This is the right place to be. I don't know. I, I'm well, when all when it is, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to be an Air Force uh, pilot. Right. Uh, uh, my father wasn't very keen on it. He was a military man himself. Oh, um, he was a military. He yeah, was, a, he, was military. A, he was a military man, a highly graduated military man with a, a distinctive career. Uh, very proud of him, of course. And um, but he didn't want me to go to the military. He said, "Son, um, you don't get fully appreciated uh, for what you do in the military. I want you to be a civil engineer." And I looked at him at the time and I said, "You want me to what?" Um, so it's actually very interesting because when I when I got into naval engineering and and he was like, okay, uh, this will do, I think. And I was saying, listen, I started um, in the air. Uh, you wanted me to 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 build things from the ground. I ended up studying to build things on the uh, on the water. So I think there's some kind of compromise somewhere. And he looked at me and said, mm, I don't know, I think this is not the end of it. And he was right. It was not the end of it. So I ended up on pub in public service. All right. So that's a very interesting uh, perspective. In, in your website, you reveal that you have been a militant of the, the Partido Social Democrata, PSD, which, you know, if you don't know about it, from Portuguese is like the center-right political party. Well, that's been a huge discussion it lately. It is, but, but it is affiliated I feel myself, with the European I've, Parliament group yeah, of the European we PP, uh, so people, we, People's Party. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a center-right, so I, I know that my... My last uh, president of party didn't think that that was right. what PSD was all about, but I'm still, I still strongly what believe. What age have you decided to go into politics? How old were you then? Oh, wow. How how did you start your politic politicize uh, politicization process or your life in politics? If, well, you know. I well, uh, it's uh, something that I never discussed in public before. Actually, it was very. I was at a very young age. I was like. 10 or 12, uh -huh. um, I always had some sort of That's a uh, very young age. Right? Yeah, I always had I, I and this is mainly due to well, there are, there are, of course, um, in my mother's side of the family, uh, a history of, of involvement in politics also on the on, on my father's side of the family, and although military people cannot have a direct military no no but my father's not a politician right. never was I'm, I'm i'm not not nor was my mother i'm i'm saying their their ancestors, ancestors. Um, mm -hmm. from both sides of the family um i we i from my side of from my father's side of the family there's it, they have always been uh the, i would say to my great grandfather he was uh, he was also in the military but he was he had a, a very political uh, perspective he was a part of uh, some uh, uh, attempted revolutions during the the transition to the republic here no during, from 33 to uh, through to 74 he was mm -hmm. He was initially pro um, the new government in, in 33, but he immediately thought, no, this is not going well. Uh, this is not what we envisioned. Mm -hmm. And he participated in a lot of, of, of revolts. So he ended up in incarcerated uh, uh, very, very, very far away from here. Um, but on my mother's side, there was also a lot of politics. Uh, my mother hates politics uh, because of it. Uh, 
and she she didn't like me to to get much involved but i had a great influence from my from my mother's father uh he was uh something someone very very close and very dear to me mm -hmm. um but he was very um, he he was very enthusiastic of my of my speaking out uh, of my, of me speaking out and I was always asking what do you think you should uh, I should go right wing left wing and at a very young age she said you should go wherever you want to go but where are you I was saying where where do you where where do you position yourself and he said that is not relevant to you and so he gave me a lot of books from left-wing books to to right-wing books and said listen why don't you read a little bit about this and uh, mm -hmm. let me know i was 12 at the time and um and then um I, I i read those books and i remember having a discussion with him afterwards saying um i i think i've made a decision but i don't know if it's the decision that you would like to hear <laughs> And I, saw, I told him, I'm closer to the Social Democrats in Portugal. Um, I think you would like me to be uh, CDS, uh, more right wing. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I don't want you to be uh, anywhere else where, but where you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but are you not right wing? No, I'm with you. I, I will be with you. If, you, if this is the, the path that you want to choose, I'll be here to, to discuss with you. I never knew where he voted. <laughs> Right. He died and I never knew where he voted. Um, no, actually, it's not true. The last time he voted, I knew where he told me. Um, uh, but, uh, but he, uh, to some extent, he, he was... Um, he was the person that really He was the person that... You. And right. then uh, I was at about... I was trying to make... A, I was trying to make my mind where should I go? Uh, I should enlist in a, in a youth uh, party, in, in a youth, uh, in the youth of, of, of one of the parties. And um, uh, there was a man at the time, a young man at the time. Um, we were living the period of the, the Cavacos majorities. And there was this right. guy from, from the youth of the PSD, from JSD, who was challenging Cavaco. And I was saying, well, there's a guy with i mean some, yeah he, he, <laughs> i understand what yeah, you say he's challenging the guy from his party and his ideas are actually very interesting now i, I didn't have the decision to go to the youth uh, at the time to the youth party at the time and i said no i'm gonna sign up to be with the youth party so um i started uh, in campaigns and then uh, when I was 18, I joined the the, the, the full party. The full of the PSD. Did you actually go through the, the the youth movements inside the school, like the Societies? No, 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 no really. that it was, was not directly my, to the party. Yeah, uh, I was very keen on, and eventually I, I went. Uh, I ended up joining the the um, the challenge for the 2001 Lapa Borough um, Executive. So. The rest is, is history, as I say. And you have been a president of Estrela Boro for over eight years now. Uh, you just got elected for your third term. Um, tell us a little bit about what have been your, you know, uh, your priorities for the for the last two terms. And I know asking this this is a very loaded question, but um, but you might see this as what are the still the biggest challenges of the the borough at this moment in your perspective well the, the top three yeah I would, if you have starting to. with the um, our main goal was actually um we have to promote some kind of transformation in terms of what um what what the perception of a public as an administration is to those that we served on a daily basis and this was my main objective i mean i I do know that people often tend to think that okay, that's public stuff. There, it's boring, it's dull, it's bu heavily bureaucratic. Right. They don't do anything. It's run by politicians. They're the worst. So, uh, okay, I'll go and do my private thing in my private life. And but the, the, sorry, do you think that's fair? The, the, I the think public, that... the public perception that you know politics is. Uh... 
it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, there's to some extent uh, we are all responsible for it. I mean, I think that politicians should take uh, uh, full responsibility for the way that people perceive them, because if if we are uh, in a way part of a, of society, and if society if we are uh, uh, if we we set ourselves to be elected by our own peers by our own community then we are also part of that community, which means that we represent something. When we have the opportunity to, to deliver, if we do not, we contribute to that negative perception. So mm -hmm. it's, it's on us. Um, and that's what I thought at the time. Well, uh, not on my watch. So if I have now the opportunity to, to lead something, I need to show them that there is a way here for boroughs to be useful and for them to be acquainted by their to be, um, so that their community f feels related to the to the um, to their own borough and and that is something that um that was the basis for what i call the citizen engagement model which means that to some extent if we are here um elected by someone mm -hmm. if we have certain objectives they were validated by the community that we serve so we have to go in that direction but time society evolves i mean if you you only get uh, if you only give the opportunity from four in, in from four years uh, in four from four years to four years uh, to say to bring on new ideas and new feedback i mean things can happen a lot in a month in a week so we have to be able to at any given moment um, allow our own organization to shift and to adapt to the new realities and not to remain in the same uh, model as it was when we were first elected. I mean, if people ask me um, how much different is Strela um, in 2022 from it was uh, in 2013, <laughs> We are miles away. I mean, uh, we, we we never we never stood on the same uh, agenda. We we tried to evolve. Where, where do you think you have evolved the most, like in in practical terms? Well, we are cleaning of the streets. Is it? Uh, where do you think people that now live in Estrela perceive the biggest differences between what was Estrela when you you took power in two thousand and thirteen? And still at 2022. Well, there are three clear areas where I think we we you are much better. We not only much better, but fully recognized by our own community. First mm -hmm. and foremost, it's an engagement, of course, the basis of all engagement. I mean, um, people nowadays know that um, at any given moment they can uh, reach out to us and say, "Listen, we have this. Uh, we have to change this. We have this problem," um, and it keeps evolving. Um, and as such, people also start to get more demand. They, they, they right. also they get more um, uh, demanding. I mean, they I mean, they, yeah, they they are they, they they put up a level. It's like it's like the Maslow pyramid. Right. I mean, as soon as you uh, um, uh, deliver the basics, right. people start asking for more. Right. And In product, we we have something called the Cano model, which is what used to be a wow factor yesterday. It's a normal thing today, yeah, and exactly it's obsolete thing tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So people are ever and ever more. Yeah. Initially, demanding. so you are more engaged. People are more engaged with the communities. More engaged with the the borough. What would would you say? It's the second and the third? the second. Uh, I would say it's our own uh, internal organization. Uh, you, you cannot just say, "Listen, uh, we develop apps and we develop citizen engagement, and you can get us uh, contact us at any at any moment." You have to have the organization that can deliver responsiveness. The, yeah, that can deliver what mm. people are asking of us, and so I would say that what uh, the second great uh, the second great uh, different uh, the second different most different characteristic that we have and i would say objective uh, achieved is our own internal organization first and foremost of course we keep with um with legislation and we are forced to have an organic um uh, public uh, structure but we have also an informal one within our own organization which is, um, I would say, the core of our capacity to quickly adapt and react. Right, the engine. Yeah, the, the engine, engine is working. It, and it keeps shifting. 
I keep uh, changing our own organization. People from an, one year and a half to two years, they keep saying, okay, here we go again. And I say, yeah, we, here we go again. It's actually not here we go again. It's our community goes again. And we have to change to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, when we speak about community, of course, um, community is a, a lot of people, different mm -hmm. interests. You know, you might think we should do something and I might think we should not do something. So what kind of practices are you applying in order to mesh up different interests, different perspectives from people in regards creating some new policy? Any interesting case to share? Well, where, where I, you have different opinions colliding and you have to create policy and you have to take decisions. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of examples. I mean, um, let, let me talk to you about the basis of that management. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, um, we've developed um, an, another interaction, interactive app, um, which is uh, very related with the, um, the participative um, uh, uh, budget. I mean, right. uh, which means that at any given moment, someone can have an idea and try to evaluate the cost of the idea and say, listen, can we do this? And usually, is that the, the participative budget of the city council, or no, is this the, your own your own yeah, participative council? Right. Um, uh, in, in the municipal council and everywhere else, this only happens on a specific moment of the year. Every every year, they say, "Listen, we're going to launch this year's uh, participative budget." So, uh, sign in your idea, um, etc. What we did in Estrela, we created an app where at any given moment along the 365 or 66 days a, a year has, you can uh, log in an idea mm -hmm. and uh, put that idea to vote. And what mm -hmm. we did, besides being different, not just waiting for a specific moment in time, but having it open all year round. On a rolling basis. Yeah. What we also introduced, introduced was another concept that was well, usually those ideas go to vote and people vote on them. What we introduced is the negative vote. Someone can vote positively the idea that you've placed on our on our app, but you can also go there and, and vote and negatively vote. Right. to that same idea. Someone can say, I would love I would love to have a cafe with a, with a nice open space uh, just just behind your window. <laughs> and you would say this could be a good idea to you, but to me, it's a lousy idea. So I'm going to vote no on that mm -hmm. idea. So this is the concept behind how we manage on a daily basis. And we have several examples where that happens. We have people that say, listen, uh, just today I, I had someone that was very upset because she wanted for um, a couple of streets to have um, uh, a mandatory um, um, uh, residents parking uh, zone just for residents and we had others on that street saying no 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 we don't want just for residents uh, and and so what we decided is okay let's see the, the the pros and cons and try to evaluate of course sometimes people get frustrated or angry because we didn't decide the way they wanted but they have to understand that and at the uh, at the end of the day we, we don't go on individual ideas. We have to think it on the basis of the entire community. Mm -hmm. And at some point, if we have a lot of negative feedback of that idea, we cannot implement it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and to some extent, uh, someone has already said, that's, you're promoting more and more, uh, more de uh, direct democracy. And, and I have to say that, again, to some extent, people, influence on a daily basis our own decision-making process. So I think that this is very relevant, mm -hmm. specifically in terms of local uh, administration. administration. So first challenge, engagement. Second, responsive and capability inside the, the borough. And what is the third aspect that you're seeing? Well, the, has... the third great objective that we achieved is um, something that is some, it's also uh, um, I would say to some extent, um, it's not, um, uh, how, how do you say it? It's not, in terms of public policy making, it's not so visible, mm -hmm. but it's regarding the way that we put our own teams to work. I've discussed about the, the, the organization itself, but 
it's not just um, the organization in, 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 its, in its whole, it's how individuals work within the organization to achieve our own KPIs. Of course, we have people that don't care. We have those civil servants that think that this is always a nine to five job. And they don't understand that within a borough, you don't have nine to five because people live there 24 hours a day. You cannot go on a weekend because at some given moment, someone can call you and say, we have an issue. And this has to do with the cultural mentality of all employees. It's not an organization. It's not a cultural thing of the organization itself, or at least it started as, but nowadays, I think that what I have been able to achieve is this is in every single individual or in the most, most individuals that work within our organization. They understand the importance of what we're doing. And sometimes that comes to a greater sacrifice from themselves. I mean, if we as a public administration, as a public entity, we cannot have all the means necessary to obtain uh, the required um, uh, issues that people ask of us, there is a certain margin of sacrifice. We have to give sometimes more hours. We have to uh, um, try to go and go somewhere else to learn a little bit more. And that, that changes our own perspective. For example, in terms of, of, of preparing our, our, our own teams, and, and I think I have to say this, the success in Strela is uh, people uh, usually say, oh, it still has an excellent present. No, it's, it's it, what they don't know. Uh, and I think I, 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 I'm obliged to say it is that still has an excellent team mm -hmm. because I could be a, a, an excellent present. Uh, Which is not an easy thing to do considering uh, all the challenges of uh, salaries and yeah. all the limitations that you have in public administration. So you were also elected uh, to be in the Assembly of Municipal of Lisboa. Uh, as as part uh, part of being uh, being a president, president junta uh, uh, is, is that so that's exactly what I want you to explain it so indulge me and I know this might be a little bit ambitious but can you explain me like I was a six year older uh, in very easy terms because I think that I have the same doubts or same questions like ninety nine percent of uh, people living in Lisbon. Or maybe 90 percent maybe <laughs> what is the political legislative flow in the city of lisbon like and i guess this is the same for any given city in, in portugal so you have the, the boroughs juntas freguesia mm -hmm. and then at the and at the higher level we have the municipal assembly and then you yeah. have the, the the mayor's cabinets what what is the now each 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 um each level of, of administration mm -hmm. has um uh two branches, the executive and the legislative. Mm -hmm. um, uh, although in the case of boroughs, um, the assemblies, they, they don't produce um, uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and also in the assembly, uh, municipal assembly, they, they can make recommendations, they cannot produce, uh, except specific, uh, like specific uh, um, uh, rules for the city, they can they can intervene, but they cannot uh, establish executive policies. Right. So, it, so starting with the with the present uh, um, junta de freguesia borough, you have the president in this mm -hmm. case you, and then you have also uh, an assembly of mm -hmm. the. Uh, what you know? What do they do, and what do you do? What's the well uh, the difference of responsibilities? I'm the executive branch, right? So, and uh, they exist to the assembly. Their their main goal of the assembly in Estrela is to uh, keep keep uh, everything that we are doing. Keep you in check is the uh, counter power. Yeah, uh, yeah, they they keep us in check. They 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 evaluate our policy making uh, decisions and our policy making our decisions. They um, they discuss and sometimes they they have the power. Uh, through some votings to block our actions. Um, and this is something very important because um, I, although I have a majority right now, both in 2013 and 2017, I, I didn't get that majority. 
mm -hmm. uh, which meant that I was always having to go through some domain. Right. Uh, you were being heavily scrutinized by the. Yeah, I, I I embraced that. Um, it's not the scrutiny that I that I fear. Uh, sometimes I fear when decisions uh, to block projects are made not with the um, by the, the merit of the idea but not with the political. community point uh, uh, right. of view uh, the community interest in view mm -hmm. but sometimes with the political interest in view right and this is something that um i, I think that in terms of local administration uh, it's something that um it can be dangerous to uh, in terms of what we can achieve uh, on, on boroughs of course it's part of the, the rules we all know that but basically, and try to say this to a, a six-year-old, we, we make decisions. And, and you, they, you have a six-year-old daughter or so, right? I have one of mine. Is so she might ask you, that. how does it work? Who, who is your boss? Who's your boss? Do you feel that the, the, assembly, the, the assembly is not the boss, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You are, in many ways, now that you have the majority, in, in many ways, you, you feel like you have your own boss or... No, I'm a Catholic, so my boss is God. Is, okay, <laughs> but end, we, we live to... in a in a secular state. So, yeah, in, yeah. in terms of politics, who is actually uh, in charge of what you're doing? Uh, I am. You so, are right yeah, oh. because you now have also the majority in the in the moral in the borough's uh, assembly. So, yeah, you are backed by your party. Uh, I'm fully backed by the coalition. It's not just my party. Mm -hmm. uh, we exactly, want, it's a we won in a coalition, um, and they've been very important. Also, I have to say. Um, uh, a party that is uh, most of the time heavily criticized, the CDS, mm -hmm. um, in Estrela um, and elsewhere. I'm, uh, I think they, they have a, a very important role in, in our society in, uh, and in Portuguese politics, so I hope they can get up to speed soon enough. Um, uh, but um, but I, 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 I have my own executive, uh, to, and I... I they keep me also in check. Um, I have a lot of discussions with them regarding uh, some uh, key aspects mm -hmm. and others. They just say, uh, Luis, we trust you. Right. Go forward, then bring us back the, the reports. But you also have some pressure from uh, the, the city mayor or, or whoever is on top yeah, of To the... some extent, uh, nowadays. And when I say you, it's not just you, it's yeah, any given any president, give, any president the, of in boroughs. In, in exactly. Specifically, I have to, to point out that Lisbon is a little bit different from the rest uh, uh, because the it has its own legislation, it has its own re responsibilities clearly defined in law. And um, and and we have uh, uh, we've been given also uh, the I would say to some some conditions to to implement all of that. So um, I, I think that we uh, we are important presence of boroughs in Lisbon are very relevant stakeholders. Uh, Antonio Costa, who is actually the, the Prime Minister now, he mm -hmm. was Mayor of Lisbon, yeah. and he once told me something I never forgot. He told us that um, uh, he had a lot of respect for, from, uh, for uh, borough presence because he looked at them as they were their own uh, territorial councillors, mm -hmm. which meant which mean that uh, uh, to some extent uh, he understood that with the new responsibilities that were given by law to the boroughs, we were a huge part in public service in, in, in the city. And, um, and that also brings a political uh, tag with it because- You are the first line, right? You are yeah, when people- I, I, I'm, I'm not only the first line when, they, when people want to see something solved, but I'm also, uh, we are also uh, the first line when, uh, for instance, the mayor goes into one direction that uh, we think it's not right. agreeable. For the good and the bad. Yeah. So exactly about that, regarding that's a great segue here for the so-called citizen movements and activist groups that have always existed, at least since we live in democracy in Portugal, which is not for that long. It's like f uh, less than 50 years. Um, and even so, in the very first years of democracy, uh, maybe they were not so active. How are you encouraging people to be more uh, participative in, in politics at the local and municipal level? Well, uh, I wouldn't say politics. I would 
I would say in terms of civic engagement, right. um, people, um, they have this bad karma regarding politics. So they say, I don't want to do politics. Right. I just want to do civic. Exactly. It has a portmanteau for uh, civic yeah. engagement. For yeah. But you know that in the end, it's it's all the same. It is. It is. <laughs> and it is. that's something that I don't know. I mean, uh, most of them, I, I told them, so how did that go? Oh, we enjoyed it very well. Okay, you did politics. No, 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 it was, no, you did politics. <laughs> yeah, because the, the word is contaminated, but uh, but the, the question here, Louise, it's really, um, are, are you bullish in this grassroots democratic movements of people having a cause? And of course, now, right now we have the, we were speaking about Almir and Reis, uh, bike lane, right? And hmm. a, a lot of what happened there is because of some activist groups, uh, you know, uh, doing some pressure to both ways right some people right. wanted it out some people wanted it in um is is this a, do you see this has a good novelty in the portuguese in the portuguese uh, uh land, landscape of having this more grassrooted uh, people people that are not necessarily politicized in this, into political no, but parties they are, but yeah but, but they are the, uh, they have the utmost relevance because they keep mm -hmm. politicians up to check i mean this right. is very important for instance, in Estrela, most of our work is creating ways to get people engaged. So um, we, I embrace all of this. Uh, and uh, what I say to everyone is, listen, we all have our point of view. The difference between one's point of view and the other's point of view is the, 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 the studying and the doc documentation of the issue itself. And politicians have the responsibility to sometimes look at things and say, OK, uh, there are two sides to this and uh, we need to know which side is uh, uh, more adequate to our community. And that can only be done with data, with information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about about that. Maybe you can give us some data. Uh, but in our second episode, we had our guest speaker, Peter Faber, uh, speaking about his software tool, very simple software tool called Hood Picker. It's, it's actually an online uh, website to help uh, Lisbon res residents and Lisbon wannabe residents to pick the right neighborhood for them, right? So people can choose different uh, criteria and it gives them like the perfect neighborhood for them to live and so on. How would you pitch uh, Estrela? To the following personas, just two personas, working parents mm -hmm. and millennials or Gen Z. Well, first of all, I, we need to know where that is so we can hack it. So it always <laughs> brings out Estrela as the best actually, option. <laughs> actually, Estrela already ranks in the, in the at least in the top three. So don't worry, I think it's already very well. Yeah, uh, I think it was on um, one one of the times that I that I that I've uh, you mentioned it I did, uh, I did, I did. a few uh, some time ago. Mm -hmm. I went there and I, we were like number two or yeah, something exactly, so we got to exactly. go number one and it's just, uh, this is... <laughs> it, it, but it depends on on the persona right because it might be great for working parents with kids yeah, but it might not be so, so good for i don't know gen z but you tell me yeah, so how well, would you pitch this you have some friends my, they are deciding where to live in lisbon yeah i would say for for working with kids, parents yeah. for working parents it's it's the best place you have a lot of schools um you have uh, uh um, there, Estrela is um, situated on a, on a, on an area where you can easily drop off your kid on 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 one of several schools, uh, different kinds of schools. You have, I would say, you have schools for every taste. Uh, it, that is how educational we reach uh, our community is, um, and uh, we have. Uh, Waldorf, uh, we have traditional. Uh, you even have a uni school. university, right? Yeah, we have an university. So I would say that we 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 have a lot of we have a lot of um, a lot of options, uh, and it's all walking distance, and it it allows you to drop off your kids. Mm -hmm. uh, either you want to go uh, um, uh, walking to the to the school or you want to go on a bike there's there uh, Strela, uh, it's majority neighborhood uh, street uh, um, street design so uh, urban like uh, very uh, low speed unfortunately there are some areas where uh, at some hours there's not so much low speed and accidents have consistently occurring we have to change that um, but you can drop off your kids, you can go to work, 
and there's a there's a lot of uh, also and it's a tight community um, um families sometimes they they help each other oh i have i've been delayed can you pick up my my mm -hmm. my kid so there's yeah. lots of trust in the yeah community. there's a there's a, a, a there's a real sense of community um and people uh they get engaged with it very quickly people are very trustworthy on that and and for gen z well it's like talking to my oldest uh, um i try to tell her okay uh, we uh, it's like uh, uh, it's the i would say one of the most instagrammables i don't know if you can say this <laughs> boroughs <laughs> of lisbon so which means that you can you can enjoy everything there's everything is uh, you have uh, great public uh, and, and green spaces in Estrela. You, you mentioned Jardim de Estrela. Yeah, you have yeah, also Tapada das Necidades, 10, mm -hmm. acre, uh, 10 hectares of... of, of beautiful. Of, uh, of, of gardens. And, gardens and yeah. it's, some, it's walled, so uh, there's still a long way to go. And I think Estrela can, can be a part of it, still a borough. Um, uh, right now, is it's uh, uh, managed by City Hall, but we we can we can we can make it go go a step further in terms of, of quality. And um, would it be better if it's if it would be managed by directly? It would by be a lot better. And do you have the the transient? Do you have the? Can you can you capture it? We have we we have made the proposal several times, right. uh, uh, and and I have the, the mayor's come, come. When when you go to Jardim da Estrela, you see, it's it's a, it's an Eden inside the city. Yeah. It's, it's really a, a little paradise, and and also maybe because of that, <laughs> Estrela is considered a, a rather posh part of the city. <laughs> so I've 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 read somewhere in on on the internet people saying. Uh, it's like a Chelsea neighborhood of Lisbon, um, you know, no pun intended, no second liners, just what people say. So, so you relate to uh, another part in another city in Europe. So where property prices are slightly higher than average, it's, you know, it's super popular uh, for nomads and, and digital expats. And now I actually work uh, very close. Um, actually, I now work as well in Estrela neighborhood mm -hmm. because I'm I'm collaborating in a client that where their biggest offices are actually very close to the Museum of uh, National Art mm -hmm. and um, lovely, lovely it's area. a lovely area and I, I happen to whenever I go to a cafe it's full of digital nomads yeah. and people speaking in, in, a, in every different every, languages, different languages mm -hmm. in French and lots of French people as well and English as well yet public transportation I might say I must say um, in my perspective, it's not it's not great. Also, because let's be honest, there's lots of hills in the city. It's a hilly part of the city, so it's not super cycling friendly. Um, for instance, in, in at least in my regards, and I'm cycling there. Um, you still don't have a metro. I know that is going to change. So my my question, Luis, is what are your plans to make Strilla less car dependent? And uh, any plans, for instance, for the expansion of the Gira electrical bikes network to, to Strela? Well, that's a hard topic. Um, well, first of all, Strela can be, as any other uh, borough in Lisbon, uh, bike friendly. Uh, what we have to understand is we cannot use one option in uh, uh, detriment of another detrimental one. of the other mm -hmm. because you cannot ask someone that uh, uh, bought a car um, and has no other way to uh, go from point a to point b in the city from work to uh, from house to workplace um, without having the, without giving him the opportunity to say listen you can drop your car here and you can use the bus, you can use the subway, you can use, you can go on foot, you can use the bike. In Stelo, uh, um, due to the low speed characteristics of most of our neighborhoods um, yeah. um, streets, streets yeah. it is possible, and I, I fully advocate that, to have that uh, option. Uh, you can have both uh, Share, shared bike share, and shared, uh, shared, car. Yeah, shared zones uh, uh, for bikes and cars. You cannot have exclusive bike zones. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, there's no space there's no for space for that. For that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to remove parking spaces at this point uh, because I have no alternative for my community. Mm -hmm. And we have to have this always in mind. You can try to bring something new. 
but you have to have on the on the other hand the alternative if that you don't do it in prejudice of your quality of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and for instance, you were talking about uh, uh, the, the problems of transportation uh, in Strela, and you're correct. Did you remember what I said in 2001 that my president at the time told me I would get the, the transportation uh, yeah. uh, responsibilities? Well, first thing <laughs> was Carriz decided yeah. that they would pull back from several uh, circuits within Strela Borough, which disconnected the main air, the main central areas from Strela, uh, from the rest of the city. So people would have no buses. They directly. would have no way to get. They would have to walk a lot to get to some buses, mm-hmm. which were not, um, I would say, the main lines. It would be um, in most, except for one case, all the others would be lines to get to the main line. If if you understand, if if I'm, if I'm being. Um, uh, quite specific yeah. about it, and if, if I'm so, they would have to do clear, hoppings instead of they having would have directs. to do hoppings, etc., etc. Et et and so, what happened was, I was at the time responsible, and no one ever knew about this, uh, about what could a borough do regard. At that time, in 2001, we had almost zero responsibilities, and what I did was, we put Carries in court, saying you oh, cannot do this. We actually went to court. Yeah, well, okay. We went to court. We were dismissed. <laughs> uh, within three or four months. Um, but that created pressure. That created, that created pressure. And um, what gave me uh, extra th- strength was the, 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 the judge decision. Uh, at the time, the judge said, I'm going to dismiss this complaint of, uh, of uh, Strela Borough in court because um, it's been three months since they uh, changed, Carriz r- removed, and no one died. <laughs> so <laughs> I was I was reading that and I was saying, how can someone write okay, this? I mean, really you're a judge crazy. for crying out loud. You you're saying that you you are dismissing this because no one died yet, and what if someone died? Uh, someone will uh, if someone dies in in the meanwhile. What what, what will will we revert that decision? Right. Um. And I, since then, I've been campaigning strongly for more engagement so, more so involvement. that actually triggered you to move forward yeah and, and this is something that the boroughs must do that they have to have strong words regarding and, and and they have to they they should be given responsibilities because they know more than everyone that you have to have alternatives and you cannot just change things that were like working well for the past 20 years uh, you have to change it, uh, and uh, and they were saying, oh, people are starting to move away, and that, now I say, okay, and what about all of those that came back, and uh, requalified all of these buildings? What do we have for them? The car. So, any any plans for the expansion of uh, expansion of the Giray bikes network in? Oh, well, that's another interesting topic. I because mean, I must say, I'm 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 now you know I'm I'm using my my own bike, but I would love to use a Giray bike to go to 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 my office there. Yeah, the question is, uh, but um, I don't I don't I don't have any. Close yeah, but the one. question is, what is the objective of Giray bike? Mm-hmm. And I have to say that the first objective of the Giro bike was to try to implement a cultural change in terms of mobility, mm-hmm. saying to people, listen, you can use bikes. But it, Giro was not the, the end. Giro is the means to. The objective of Giro is not for you to always use Giro bike. Uh, the objective is for you to get your own bike. Because Giro bikes cannot go from exactly where you want to where you want to go. From where you are to where you want to go. Um, this will have to eventually occur with you having your own bikes because you have to dock the Giro bikes. Yeah. And so if you don't have, you, you cannot have a docking station in, 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 in every crossroad. So there's no way that Giro bikes will eventually be useful in that way. Giro bikes are very important to, t- to say to people, listen, try this. See that you can use this. This is the way for changing in terms of mobility. And it is. I mean, it is, it is. changing and, a lot. And it has to go through... People that otherwise would not... Uh, yeah, and, and you have to expand it to the entire city. And at some given moment, you have to say, okay, it has done its, its objective. And now we are in a different... Uh, uh, but we are not there yet. Right. So zero bikes for that cultural change is still very relevant. Okay. Please, you have been defending that juntas, the boroughs, should have more competencies, and we already talked about it today. So what kind of competencies are you envisioning or are you defending? And are all of the juntas ready for that? Because, um, or should we have like different 
tiers, like super juntas that are very, very advanced. They can already take those uh, competencies and then have a second uh, tier of juntas that are still not so ready. I know this is polemic. Maybe this is not even uh, constitutionally uh, possible. But Why? on a tour, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I definitely. The I don't question know. is: uh, try to Would... go straightforward to your answer. I mean, mm -hmm. um, uh, to to answer you, the question is: um, what do we want for Burroughs to to do? Right. You were asking me earlier: how could you describe to the six-year-old what would uh, 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 Burroughs do? And I, I I I I learned a lot with your answer. By yeah, way. and. Um, I was a bit evasive on that in terms, specifically in terms, because I would be very more uh, confident and very more keen on saying what I think uh, Burroughs should do. All right, so let's go that that line of thought. What do you think Burroughs, Burroughs do? could be? The f they are they are recognized by everyone as the potential first line to solve issues on community uh, on a community basis. Uh, you don't want boroughs. Uh, you want boroughs to uh, give a response, give uh, um, um, solve issues on a daily basis, your own issues. You want to go out to your street and say, I want this fixed and I want it now. So, and you also have a community to attend to. You have the elderly, you have those that are in, in dire needs of, in terms of social, in terms of uh, financial support, uh, clinical support. Um, this is what boroughs can do. So the main goal of boroughs should be local intervention. We have to manage on a locally based um, uh, uh, territory map our own uh, uh, public area. We have to manage it. We have to fiscalize it. We have to do uh, everything that is related with day-to-day um, -day running of cities. And then you have to go and see, and, okay, if you do that, what are municipalities what should municipalities do? Easy. They are the planners of cities. They can capacitate you to do more in terms of quality on a daily to, on, a, on a daily basis, in terms of responding to your community. But municipalities, they, they should have their main goal should be we have to plan ahead. We have to be able to prepare the city for the 22nd century to the 23rd century to tomorrow. Uh, uh, we have to understand how mobility will uh, uh, evolve. We have to understand how uh, public transportation will evolve. We have to understand how cars will evolve. We have to, for me, cars, uh, the, it's not uh, the, the, the CO2 emissions problem because in 10 to 20 years time, they yeah, will be all electric. And oh. you say, okay, that's not, the problem will still be in terms of, of electricity will be uh, producing, uh, will uh, pr the producing of electricity uh, in terms of CO2 emissions will be on uh, on the source? No, mm -hmm. because we are trying to, uh, go, to go fully full uh, renewables, fully renewables in, in, in also in Portugal. So, mm -hmm. but they are, they, we cannot have so many uh, cars in, in our streets. Uh, uh, the city has to attend to this. You cannot do that while, for instance, uh, you have uh, uh, um, so many cars entering the city every day. That's what cities have to plan. So that's the city-wide responsibility. Yeah. So, okay, but one counterfactual or one uh, counter-argument that people sometimes say, or at least it, it comes in my mind, is that not all uh, boroughs are born equal. So sometimes you have boroughs which might be very well managed and are in effect. And then you might have other boroughs that are not so well managed. Yeah. And then you have, and then if you bring on more responsibility, it also means that uh, the, the the playing field and the heterogeneity of management might be more um, more passed through to the citizen and the, the you know and that, uh, that what I'm trying to say is how do you, could, how, could, how do you balance that? Yeah, there's uh, I'm going to give you um, there's two ways that could uh, go hand to hand to solve that. First and foremost, um, uh, boroughs can be like I mentioned, Estrela. Um, a pocket of innovation. Right. You can look at certain boroughs and say, listen, you guys have developed, uh, uh, because nowadays boroughs are not all the same. Not all boroughs are, are high tech. Of course. Not, not, not all boroughs went digital. Um, some have developed certain areas more specifically and, and very well managed than others. So what I say is, okay, you can create to some extent and choose 
some of the burrows say, okay, uh, or you can apply your burrow, uh, that would be more transparent. You can apply your burrow and say, we want to be a pocket of, inno a pocket of innovation on this um, kind of... Almost specialties <clears throat> yeah. in, in and, different parts. And at the same time, you have to say, okay, but how can you balance it all? That's why boroughs are elected. Hmm. In the end of the day, we have to... Uh, uh, um, make to, it accountable, we, make the democratic we process work. We, are, uh, we, are, we have to be, be accountable it, for, it, for our decisions and our own community will say, you're not good enough, goodbye. Right. It's like but that even, program in Sky. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. What about sharing best practices? Making, I don't know. You have any uh, best practice sharing with your uh, with the other boroughs of yeah, Lisbon? Have, like have a, a playbook because people are coming to your door. I know that for a fact, right? Um, and how do you guys share these best practices so you can learn with each other? Uh, um, I don't impose anything that we do to others, of course. Um, uh, but I've been very receptive to um, uh, to ask for for Christ for help um, and for ideas. So what I what I've been implementing and um, and the pandemic was uh, uh, to some extent was uh, a difficult moment to 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 develop it is um, we are creating programs within Strela to go to other boroughs that uh, signal uh, some sort of we want to know how you do this. And, and we go there and we explain them. We first, we try to understand what they are doing. And then we say, okay, we can implement it this way or that way. Um, or if they have any ideas, that's how I started in Stilla. I went mm. to, I, I did a lot of benchmarking at the time, right. I think. Uh, but uh, do you feel that now that you have been reelected uh, to the ANAF, Association Nacional de Freguesias or National Association of Boroughs, uh, to the Board of Directors, that's also the responsibility of such a, such an association yeah. to share best practices, to invite the associates to learn with each yeah, other. That, and... that is my commitment to to Anafra. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, I, I, I'll be dedicated. Uh, and I will invest heavily on this best practice sharing methods and 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 moments. Mm -hmm. This is something that we have to uh, bring to other boroughs, and we have to know something. Um, there is a great discrepancy between boroughs in Lisbon and boroughs, uh, uh, other boroughs in, in, in the country. Uh, I have a 7.5 million, um, uh, not right now only a seven, so somewhat 7 million uh, budget, uh, early budget, uh, uh, early budget. There are boroughs that have uh, 50k, uh, 50k euros, uh, 50,000 euros of budget, annually budget. Is the just out of curiosity but i guess lots of people are asking the same not that they have asked but maybe they have this in their mind um is the salary of the president the junta the same all over the country yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's you the are same. making the same as the that president the junta that has the 15k budget the, the guy with 50k he only has uh he, he, he can be a full-time president okay but he he's only supported by the government antonio costa uh, is implementing that in in this new and and it's a very good decision in this new budget for 2022 uh government budget for 2022 which allows all of the the presence of of all boroughs to at least be supported by the state to be there um um at uh, full time uh, no half time half time half time okay um if the budget of the the borough can support the rest they can be there at full time i'm more than certain that with those low budgets that i just referred to it is impossible for a president to be there at full time of course and this will eventually mean that there are boroughs that Boroughs can be um, uh, um, very uh, uh, can be local places to, uh, of development. They can they can have a, a positive impact of local development. Uh, I, I have to tell you that I have um, my borough is uh, almost four kilo, square kilometers in area. Uh, Lisbon is uh, 110 k k square kilometers in area. There are boroughs that have 400. Yeah, kilometer that are square bigger kilometers than Lisbon, in much area. Bigger, absolutely. They are four times bigger than Lisbon and they have a lousy budget. Mm -hmm. So um, this is how um, there is this enormous discrepancy between um, uh, territories. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is where I think that the government should act and say, listen, let's look at the boroughs 
uh, this is my last term as president of Estrela, so I think this is the moment where because because it's a constitutional limit. Or? Yeah, there, it's a constitutional okay. limit. You can right. only do three three terms, three terms in a row. Right. Um, as president, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was in Estrela, uh, uh, I was in Lapa, but I was not uh, I was not president, and so this means that um, there's a huge investment in, in trying to make boroughs. Um, uh, places for local development and they can be uh, stakeholders, and, active stakeholders. And do you think that the regionalization movement, uh, that it's now ongoing, uh, you know, it's still not ongoing, but might be ongoing in, under this term, is going to change the, the life of boroughs, will have any kind of impact or not? Really? I don't know. I think that you only have critical mass for two regions in continental Portugal. Mm -hmm which means that the others, it's like you're, you're always looking at this uh, top down. Let's implement this on a local basis, on an intermediate basis, when you should do the other way around. Let's go bottom up. Let's see what each region uh, can, uh, um, uh, can bring to you. And um, you, you, give, you, 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 you leave some of that to that region development and you get the rest so that uh, your government can then reapply the, the, those uh, those budgets. And so you can try to level up a little bit the playing field in terms of uh, local development. Um, the region, the, this regionalization, um, I don't know if you nowadays, if you cannot place all of the responsibilities that uh, central government has that shouldn't have, in municipalities, uh, what will happen in, in in the meantime? I mean, who will get what and why doesn't all of this go to the municipalities and they will choose which responsibilities mm -hmm. will go up? But are, do you, are you more of a municipalist than yeah. a regionalist? Yes, more. Okay, more. interesting. Definitely because that's, that, that's not the, 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 at least the public view that the, the, your party has been... The, the yeah. The, your right. political party, from what I know, you, you but mean uh, that the still president, the, the, the still president, okay. exactly. So we all know about we'll that. we'll know about that in the future, of course, in May. So getting into product, wish, and this is really, I would say, uh, one of your ex libris. Uh, when when the troika, like I said, forced Portuguese government to reorganize the boroughs and initiate the consolidation process, that led to the creation of the the Estrela borough. You, uh, w when you had a challenge, you you decided, okay, let's design and create Geo Estrela, which is a platform to allow citizens to report any situation that they feel like communicating to your management. And uh, you even have a situation room, which I visited in inside the borough headquarters, where you process all these requests in real time. Can you guide us through uh, your thought process at the time to create this um, platform? which is what it is. Yeah, basically it's like I said earlier, my idea was we have to be the solve the problem solver for each of our constituents. And, um, and for to do that, we have to be able to uh, react quickly to their demands. But first we have to know where the problem is. When we launched Geostrela, I had a, a other uh, borough presidents that were uh, furious with me. They say, what are you doing? People will start pointing out everything. You, 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 you lose popularity yeah, I've, in- I've heard about it. I've yeah, heard about it. You lose way. popularity yeah. in, in, in a nick of time. And I said, no, but this is, isn't this why we were elected? We have to know where the problem is. If we, if we don't know where the problem is, I'll be sitting here four years and I will be doing nothing disconnected with the reality disconnected with the reality of people that that uh, that trusted in mm -hmm. me to 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 lead Strela. So the my mindset was and how, how did you find the budget at the time? Was there like a European Union funded project? No, no, no. Did you scrap from the yeah, you had to scrap it. Yeah, I made a huge no, uh, at the time. Um, uh, we had an issue that was um, we had no idea how things would evolve. It was the first year of Strela, right. uh, not of my existence in Strela. No, and it was the first year of Strela in, in a whole. And they're very, very uh, demanding financial uh, in, in environment yeah, uh, due yeah. to the, the Troika still being here. And with another issue, if I may, um, 
no one wanted to come from the city hall to work in Strela. Mm -hmm. I had to go out to look for people to work with us. So we were scrapping everywhere. We were saying to people, listen, we can, at some point I said, we can, we can be uh, also a benchmark. So you were an entrepreneur inside, an entrepreneur inside To some government. extent, I was, right. it's like I said earlier, we want to be a pocket of innovation. Mm -hmm. Test us. And because of that, I must say, in 2015, you were dis distinguished as uh, Chief Information Officer of the Year in Portugal for the Public Sector category, and this recognition was awarded by Sionet, which is a very prestigious uh, European community of technology decision makers, which every year uh, rewards the most outstanding European CIOs. So, um, what, what did the jury consider as the most important in your work to have awarded you? Was it because the total inno innovative factor that you decided to bring to the public administration? Yeah, at the time, uh, uh, what I sensed, I mean, I didn't have uh, actual access to their report and mm -hmm. their findings and the, why was I voted or right. not. Um, what I sensed from all of, the, all of the conversations that I had was, uh, first and foremost, the wow factor. You're a public entity, low key, uh, local, and you're producing this kind of digital transformation. And unexpectedly. Yeah, and, and, and they were saying, um, it was not just reporting, everybody had reporting uh, Somehow. Um, uh, mm -hmm. to some extent uh, in their, in several municipalities. In Lisbon, they had a, a reporting uh, a solution also. What was different was I could, uh, I could report it, it in 15 seconds. I would only have to take a picture and it will all, all automatically geo-reference geo it and everyone would know where that was. Yeah. But most importantly, that was not like an inbox. That was directly connected to our services. Uh, that was not uh, um, uh, some sort of, of protest form. Hey, protest here about something. No, 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 no. You were guiding our maintenance services to go straight to where your complaint was. And this was something that said, how can you, it's not just an app, it's everything that's behind the app. It's how the, the, the entire organization was behind that app. And this was something that at the time they thought, why did you do this? And I said, because I don't, uh, borough presidents were always in in the, the Fire, middle of some firefighting mode. No, they were always they had to be in part of something. I have to get feedback. I don't care. I just want the problem solved for those for for that people. So, mm. so what, you I, to I empower, took myself. Empower I empower teams. my teams right. so that they can solve their the problems. Of course, it makes lots of sense. But one of, one of the, the things that always comes to my mind, uh, Luis, is that at least a big part of Geo Estrela today, at least, has the same features that you find on the, the citywide app, Na Minha Rua Alex, which is the, the reporting app of the, the City Council of Lisbon. Or the... mm. So with this new administration and being the, the new city mayor, Mr. Carlos Moedas already, I guess, in full swing, or at least 90% swing, wouldn't it make sense to integrate it all under the same umbrella or the same app to avoid uh, user experience fragmentation across different touch points? I mean, I I'm guessing that people in Strela, they might report it one way or the other if they want, right? Hmm. Because they have access to the... To, the, to, both. to, to both. both. Yeah. No, what, what we... I mean, I, I asked the uh, previous mayor over and over again, let us connect both apps because uh, our uh, our own organization can separate those um, those signalings that come uh, that go that, that are our own responsibility mm -hmm. and those that are city hall's responsibility and we can uh, forward them within the app you can get us you, you can get the the um, uh, the, the order uh, to the when you signal an, an issue mm -hmm. on our end, we get uh, uh, like uh, uh, in some companies, uh, you call it a terrible ticket. And uh, in ours, it's like a reparation order. You have to go there. Uh, our service get, get it and they go there. And I said, we can uh, signal this and we can channel it to your own. Um, our apps just need to communicate with each other at the f first i didn't understand why they were not very um keen on doing it 
but then I, I understood it doesn't work the same way that ours does. I mean, ours is quicker to, to, to report and, uh, and ours goes straight to the services and, uh, and theirs doesn't go straight to the services. Actually, one of the things that I was, uh, what, that I was very uh, glad about in 2015 with that reward was not the word itself. Well, it was the fact that I set out to prove that a borough could be uh, um, that pocket of innovation, could mm -hmm. be that exciting as an organization. And in two years' time, uh, we were recognized by it. Uh, so, But do you envision the, this future where both apps or most both platforms will somehow coexist or will eventually merge or will work better together what's your the, the, vision the yeah. municipal app Namnihua, doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. and why although i use it a lot i must say yeah. with, the, and and sometimes i feel it's my only gateway to the city to the municipal to, issues yeah but for yeah. very simple stuff like there's a you know, there's uh, some kind of thing broken on the street or there's no light on the, the lamppost or yeah. whatever it is. The problem is um, they usually, it, it doesn't make any sense in, in, its, for, in its current format because it, it, it doesn't connect with, uh, for instance, city maintenance it's, uh, it is not within city hall. Mm -hmm. It's within the boroughs. Right. So if you don't get the, a way to communicate directly with the boroughs, and keep that in the same level of organization and say <coughs> sorry and it's not covid <laughs> and no, no, say it might be a little bit too cold if we might uh, increase a, a couple of degrees that we and awesome. say and say uh, listen um we have uh, we, we have this report from someone on your neighborhood on your borough um what happens nowadays is they give they 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 contact us by email Mm. So what, what's your alternative is, uh, vision? Is it uh, each borough has its own app system? or Each borough can have its own app system as long as it is integrated in a municipal one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would even go further, right? Uh, so, so just to give you an example, Luis, in our first podcast this season, we were interviewing uh, Justus Petronas from Vilnius in Lithuania, and he told me that uh, the city of Vilnius actually has a CTO, so do you think it's time for the, the city of Lisbon, which is much larger than Vinius, to have a chief technology officer or chief product officer, or at least a chief information officer, if you will, to lead the product uh, teams to help the, the mayor and the, the president of the junta and the, the political uh, governance to define the strategy, the long-term vision, and oversight uh, the, the managing of digital products that serve uh, communities? That is, that is the key question you should ask. It, it shouldn't have one of them, it should have them all. And why? Well, because it, it first, because it, it represents uh, the transformation of the organization itself. A public organization cannot uh, run itself with the layout of the 19th century uh, uh, public or organizations. Mm -hmm. It cannot. It has to go to the 21st century and we are already late, which means that in terms of who is who within its organization, it has to be clear. We had uh, um, an interesting uh, subject that occupied most of the political training and debating uh, prior to the election was the, the, the thing of the email to Russia, if you remember it. Mm -hmm. What was the issue? You had someone that was responsible um, for uh, every every aspect of um, yeah, the data, uh, data, data protection, right. uh, data protection manager, but he doesn't have access to everything. He doesn't have uh, uh, the organization. He, they build up an organization around that person, but he didn't have access to the organ to the municipal organization as a whole, which means that every uh, organization within city hall is some, it is, is to some extent disconnected from the others. And this is one of the problems with the functioning of City Hall, in, in this case, Lisbon City Hall, which is the one that I know the most. Of course, that's uh, the one that we are caring and, about. Yeah, this and and well. this, this is something that has to be uh, uh, clearly changed. And it's, if, if you can't do this in an organical and, and in terms of legislation, then do it on an informal basis. Uh, I did it in Strela, although in a much smaller scale, of course, but it, it, it's, it's a proof of concept. It can work. And the responsibilities within the organization flow. 
or, or regarding the the informal aspect of the organization itself are, are you confident that the current mayor is going to address this uh, situation i'm very confident that you will be addressing a lot of situations this mm -hmm. one included um i have the utmost um uh, respect and 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 I, I I admire a lot uh, Carlos Moedas for 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 what he has been able to do in the past and what I think he can do in the future, and it, it's a huge responsibility. But I think he's the man to 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 make this leap forward. Um, it's not just uh, a question of who is the council person, uh, who is the municipal director, um, who is on board of city hall. It's like, or uh, for instance, it's like boroughs. We are small um, boards. Boroughs are uh, very small boards. City Hall is actually a very big one. Big one. But uh, the president and its councillors, they're like the boards. They, 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 they establish the guidelines and they should organize the structure below them to execute on their program mm -hmm. and not to uh, be tangled with the traditional public sector uh, bureaucracy system that uh, uh, yeah I understand what you're saying and you know the the, the current city council was elected uh, December right no or, October, uh, October uh, uh, or, end of September end of, uh, they, they they took office on November lots of people think that new administrations get elected once they you know they start working on the day they come to the office but I guess it's not exactly like that from your experience how many months does it take to get into cruise speed it will depend a lot um uh, we are now we are on six on into uh, six months is well yeah. five months is into yeah uh, people used to say well you have this uh, six months free pass um mm -hmm. in terms of public demand but i have to say that um i don't want to create any gap in terms of 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 uh, expectations but we do have to understand that this is the smallest cabinet ever in lisbon uh, history by choice or by... By, we didn't have a choice. We were, we were only elected seven. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlos Moedas did an outstanding job trying to get others parties to get uh, uh, to get within the the cabinet with responsibilities, and they declined. Right. So which meant that in uh, 70, uh, 17 councillors, mm -hmm. uh, only seven have uh, executive powers. And this is something that never happened before in Lisbon's history. So the Lisbon uh, organization, municipal organization, is, uh, I would say, set for nine to ten executive councillors. And this is something that we have to change in the future because it, this is nonsense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot force a minority to work without the the required minimal conditions mm -hmm. um that uh, other uh, local governments have and, and can you change it during this uh, tenure dur during this le no, during term? this during no. this period this term we cannot so we have to live with it we have to live with it and uh, and that goes to the question of how long until cruising speed we are uncharted territory Mm -hmm. And um, I've witnessed uh, the best efforts from all uh, councillors and from the mayor itself, himself um, to get to cruise speed. And um, uh, I still am witnessing that they are faced with... Uh, Muedas is not a bureaucratic person. He hates entangling and he hates uh, weird bureaucracy. Right, he's a doer. Yeah, he's a doer. And uh, he's, he's having the battle of his life. And uh, we've been witnessing that uh, mm -hmm. every day. So if you had a superpower to change anything in government policy, and now it's government, not municipal, national level, what would it be? It's this top-down view of public administration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this, this already was outdated in the 80s. It's clearly outdated in, 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 the, in the 2020s. So um, we have to uh, empower local administration. We have to, to abandon this central-like state that we've earned, that we have uh, built from, from, from the revolution period. We have a lot of capable uh, uh, in every party. I have to say this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that only in PSD are there are competent uh, people. No, mm -hmm. of course there are competent people everywhere, 
uh, I think that in PSD there are those that I agree the most to, to right. get the, the, the country forward. But the other ones, they are not incompetent. They are uh, people but, of value. But to bring new talent, you need also to, to, bring to raise talent. salaries. You need Everybody to says, let's bring budget. in the, uh, society into politics. How? Mm. I mean, listen, you try to do something in politics and your entire life comes out on the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, most of them are lies. Yeah, who, and it's, who, it's... Who, who will be who, who wants that right. for them from of themselves? Of course, of course. No people. one wants that. I want to have my. I'm quiet here on my own private sector. I don't. I, I don't want to go there. All right, we're coming to the end of our interview, but let me ask you: still in this, um, you know, has the the new mayor is elected the same party, uh, PSD, and and considering that one of the one of the promises, one of the electoral promises of Mr. Moedas is to remove the train line between and I'm quoting, between the city and the river, would you like to finally see uh, it implemented in the borough of Estrela? Definitely. I mean, one of the issues, um, Estrela has a very intense um, um, port um, utilities. Um, it's huge. And it, they are now uh, in uh, constant uh, renovations. Yeah, I've seen it they're, they're building up. The they, have building. New, they have new equipment. Which is something sometimes people forget. Lisbon is very much a very port town with a very active uh, port uh, yeah. uh, facilities working and uh, now, now we have to look at, it, at the whole the metropolitan area of Lisbon mm -hmm. and there are several municipalities um, coast to that 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 are coasted with uh, with Tagus River mm -hmm. and all of them should uh, take place in that new concept of the the big Lisbon Arbor you cannot concentrate everything on uh, Lisbon uh, uh, city's shores. You have to spread them out. Mm -hmm. um, and it, so it, what, what Lisbon is... can be a very important hub and that will bring jobs that will uh, infor, that will um, uh, transform and, and set forth our economy. We can be in fact the, the entry port of Europe, but we have to be able to get all of that cargo and put it on to the rest of Europe. And um, how is your relation with the Port Authority? We don't have uh, we don't have a relation. They don't acknowledge boroughs. They're a central. They're dependent of central government. Mm. They have to acknowledge municipality, the city hall, uh, because okay, it's city hall of Lisbon. But they, I think they look at us as boroughs and who are these guys? I mean, we're doing our job. Keep quiet. Um, yeah, I just love the basketball fields that they have built in, in your borough, I guess, technically speaking. I don't know. It's the, the Port Authority's terrains, your borough, or are, it's considered like their own terrains? Well, those that are not, since 2019, there was a decree from the government that said um, every area that is not uh, uh, specifically related with port administration, with mm -hmm. cargo, right. with uh, with trucks that take cargo, with docking areas, with repairment areas, um, all of those areas have to go back to, to the, uh, the public domain and right. in to city hall, and by uh, force of the fifty six slash two thousand twelve um, law, Decree. they have <laughs> to uh, come to Estrela and to other boroughs, um, but they are still, th this is still a gray area, so they build what they want, they uh, they do what they want in that territory, but I think that is something that is short, is going to be short-lived because that legislation already came out in 2019, so mm -hmm. I'm hoping that uh, sooner rather than later we will we'll have full administration of that territory. Luis, um how would you envision the use of technology to improve people's lives in the future? Any specific use cases? Any like, of course, we spoke a little bit about the past and how you know you were you were so innovative um, a few years ago. But are are there any uh, new technologies that you guys are looking into right now? Um, well, there are from 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 artificial intelligence to 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 quantum computing. You have uh, when when we started. Uh, um, we started when people were starting to speak of smart cities. Yeah. And at the time, I thought, you don't want smart cities. You want sentient cities. Mm -hmm. You don't want just cities to be smart. You want cities to be responsive. So for cities to be responsive, they have to be aware. 
if they are aware they are sentient and this is uh how i envision the concept it's not sexy i know no one talks about sentient cities <laughs> but this was the main idea because most of city management uh from traffic lights to um uh, street lights to um, even to order um, uh, uh, regular maintenance it could be all managed in terms uh, digitally managed right. you, you wouldn't need any kind of human intervention except for establishing priorities this is how i envision uh, uh, the local city man infrastructural management of the future in terms of infrastructures in terms of city maintenance in terms of everything that is not people related everything that is people related it it must continue to be through um non-digital um uh, decision making uh, uh, by so with uh, uh, counselors with psychologists with they still have to uh, be able to do their work the other the other part decision making regarding uh, go repair that hole go take that one of the one of the things that i would like to have in in my new role uh, of responsibilities in in my borough would be uh, changing street lights or um, um, the same way i can repair holes on the sidewalk i should mm -hmm. be able to repair holes on the street why can't i do that right. I mean, so if you had like three months and now we can be a little bit more uh if i had sorry if you had three months three months mm -hmm. to learn a relatively new technology or skill which one would you choose and i know you're a super busy person but let's say god just said okay i'm going to freeze time and now you have three months to do it on your own terms uh, that, was it. That, that is is a quantum computing quantum now. computing yeah. style yeah. yeah quantum i computing? think i think that will be the game the the definite game changer in 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 quite some i mean uh, we've been we've been to some extent, everybody, uh, I would say that to some extent we've been, um, how do you say it, uh, not blocked, but uh, uh, streamlined by the, the binary concept. Um, if we go quantum, uh, imagine the speed of processing, imagine the quantity of work that you can be able to do, imagine the sentient city deciding on microseconds the change of street lights to to allow um f uh, traffic uh, uh, to flow better to flow better right. uh, instead of those uh, smart city uh, mo uh, systems that we have but that they don't think that, that they don't react to local numbers mm -hmm. uh, they they are uh, they are programmed uh, time advanced so they they don't do it on on the clock um uh, imagine the number of new jobs that will be created imagine uh, how culture itself will change because people uh, can start uh, you can work from your home which means that you can work uh, 300 kilometers from lisbon and be as effective as uh, being in lisbon do you think that's 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 a trend have you have you seen on the demographics of your borough any any trends uh, regarding people living the, the borough and, and going outside or do you think that the, the current and just digressing a little bit but do you think that this current pandemics has uh, changed the dynamics in a in a profound way or do you think this is really not uh, visible at least in the statistics that you have what we immediately uh, identified was, uh, um, I would say, uh, more than 15% of my population, which is a very huge number, uh, was not uh, in Strela during the pandemic. Mm, wow. What does this mean? Well, and how do we do? How do we know this? Well, basically, because we started out on. Um, on a program to go to uh, people's homes and door, door to door right? door to door and uh, ask them uh, How are do you? you need anything right. uh, how's everyone here is your one of the things that we were very concerned of was the elderly that were left alone yeah and we were thinking is everyone are you alone in the building uh you're alone your on your home but are you alone in the building and why is this relevant because we were able to um learn a lot of habits 
from our own community. And we've discovered that um, um, there was this big number of people that left Estrela. They went to other places where they had other homes, right? Secondary, um, houses. secondary homes. And to some extent, actually, um, in, in, term, in fiscal terms, it's their first home. Um, but what that meant was, in, in the beginning, we thought no one's working. But then people started working again, and mm -hmm. they were not coming back. Mm -hmm. And we witnessed that there were a lot of people that, that lived in Estrela that could work in a distance. And uh, this is, to some degree, uh, we can, I don't know if you can establish a correlation with the concept of what quantum computing can bring us, but it sure tells us that we can, in several professions, we can work outside the, the, um, uh, uh, the, the office. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bullish on this idea of distributed city. It mm -hmm. is, you know, it's not because you are in Lisbon that you are a Lisboner, right? The, the city can be distributed also because of the digital and, and for sure quantum computing and other technologies will play a role there. And and finally, we, we spoke a little bit about words of advice when you, you told us that lovely story about your grand, grandparent um, helping you, guiding you through your political journey. So what kind of uh, words of wisdom would you give your younger self, 18-year-old uh, Luis, who had just graduated from high school? I, I guess high school from Estrela as well, because you studied there. No, actually, my high school was in the border uh, of Estrela. Okay, but, but very, very, very close yeah, to home. Uh, any, you know, anything that would you, you know, we had the chance to time travel and let him know something. Um, what would you wisdom not factual stuff like oh there's going to be a pandemic in 20 years time or whatever that is i would say that um um i would tell him to uh always keep full trust in himself mm -hmm. um i would ask i would say to everyone that i mean we're all bound to make mistakes uh, but what i've learned is don't make anything different because you wouldn't learn uh, with the mistakes that you've done. And a great part of me today is, of course, all of the, good, the things that I've done correctly, but also what I've learned when I uh, messed up, when I did something that, okay, that was not the way you should have done, or that project didn't, didn't go well. Um, my, my wife usually says that I'm a very easable person to talk to because I have, uh, um, I have a lot of ideas. Uh, and, and 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 she says and well and perhaps three or four percent of your ideas are good <laughs> ideas that's not a bad uh, ratio <laughs> uh, the rest is good talk uh, so i would say to me and to everyone we should always trust our own selves uh, on ourselves we should trust on our cap uh, on our capacities and uh, we should trust even when we do mistakes uh, uh, we have to learn with them. That's life. Uh, and I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I would still love to, to fly a, an Air Force plane, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but now I have yeah. a family and um, three lovely daughters and uh, they're, they're, I, I wouldn't have changed so No, no second thoughts of volunteering no second, for no Ukraine. No second thoughts on anything. Um, so, Luis very uh just a, uh what what would you recommend to our listeners uh if they are going to visit uh Strela this weekend what where should they go if you know maybe there some spot so many is, places i know i know there so, many, so places. many places well still i would say still is now uh, um becoming a very um uh, very trendy on something that i i'm very fond of um which is brunch Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would recommend them to go to 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 our neighborhood of Santos, mm -hmm. uh, where we have several very high quality uh, brunch places. Uh, there are other high quality brunch places not in Santos, but in Santos uh, you have uh, several uh, of them uh, in walking distance of each other. And why am I saying walking distance? Because there's a probability that you should stay in line in, in both. Or, or in three different places so that you can get in. Do you have uh, any perks? 
No, you, no, you don't. No, no. I actually, I have. An no, issue. when I say it's not people paying you brunch, but say, "Hey, Mr. President, come on in." No, I mean, no, 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 no. That that usually happens. I say, "No, no, I stay in line." Mm. Uh, I should give the, the, the that's example. A, that's a Steve uh, Steve Jobs story that I heard the other yeah. day that he was in line in his own cafeteria yeah. at Apple. That's crazy. Yeah, and you. No, that's you not know, crazy. That's, it is. That, that it is, sounds crazy. I mean, it sounds people, crazy, but, especially but no. in a, in but that's a, that's how you set an example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you should start with yourselves. Uh, I, I say this to my to to my my well, not the three of them because one of them is uh, the, the youngest is uh, only a, a year old, so she will, she won't she understand, understand it. But to the other two, I always say to them, it's not uh, who we are; it's what we do that will mm -hmm. be the judge of us. So uh, we should always stay in line because. I am present now, but in three years' time, I will be uh, like someone asking the Strela Burroughs president, do this. And, and so we have to stay in line. Right, <laughs> staying in line. Thank you, Luis. It was great having you. Great conversation. Um, thanks for joining us at the podcast. If you enjoyed your stay, give us your review on the Spotify podcast or wherever you're listening to this and share this episode with friends and colleagues. You also have the show notes and more episodes at productize.medium.com. Join our community. We will share the links in the chat. This podcast was hosted by me, Andre Marquet, with research done by Evelina Bogdan, also here in the studio, and sound edited by Miguel Souza. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Thanks.